All right. So we've mentioned the algebraic form of a polynomial, and we've started connecting the algebra to the graphs with n behavior in the last uh, video. So now we're going to want to continue that, and we're going to talk about intercepts, x-intercepts and y-intercepts. Well, the easiest thing is the y-intercept. And the way the y-intercept connects with the formula is simply that the y-intercept is known as the, is going to be equal to, rather, the constant term. The number that doesn't have any x on it. And if there isn't anything that has, you know, that's uh, not attached to an x, then your intercept is zero. So, for example, if we look at 22 on page 176 of this section, 22 has us look at a polynomial defined as x to the 6th minus 7x to the 4th plus 7x squared plus 15. Now, we mentioned before n behaviors related to the leading term, the leading coefficient and the degree. And the leading term is x, uh, the term that has the highest power of x. So in this case, x to the sixth is our leading term. And the leading coefficient is the number out in front. Well, I don't see a number out in front. So I can just put a 1 here, because 1 times anything is itself. So this makes the leading coefficient 1. And then the degree is the other number in the leading term. It's the exponent. So with a leading coefficient of 1, and what was important was whether the leading coefficient was positive or negative. Ours is positive. It's greater than 0. What was important about the degree was that it was even. So with a positive leading coefficient, this tells us that the right end of the graph goes up. And the degree being even tells us that the left and right do the same thing. So they're both going to go up. So we know our graph for f of x is going to look something like this. But then we can also tell where it's going to hit the y-axis based on the constant term. Because if you just remember what a y-intercept is, a y-intercept is where you set x equal to 0 and find the y-value for that x. Well, if we plugged 0 in for x, 0 to the 6th is 0, x to the 4th, or 0 to the 4th is 0, 0 squared is 0, so we've got 0 minus 7 times 0, that's 0, 0 minus 0 is 0. We've just got a bunch of zeros here. The only thing that's not going to be 0 is the 15, the constant term. So this tells us where is it going to hit the y-axis. And it says it's going to hit the y-axis at y equals 15. So y-intercepts are really very easy. The difficult part are the x-intercepts, where you set y equal to 0 and solve for x. So if we set 0, the left-hand side, to be 0, and try to solve for x, that's a much more difficult problem. And we'll get into that in later sections. But for now, let's just work with really nice factored forms of parabola or uh, polynomials, rather. So, in its fully factored form, we're given a polynomial on problem 28. 
3 times the quantity x plus 2 squared and then we multiply that with the quantity x minus 3. So this is our polynomial. It's factored as much it could as much as it could possibly be factored. If we're going to look for the x intercepts then we're going to set y or f of x to be 0 and we're going to try to solve. Well, we've got a product of things being 0. So the only way that could happen is if one of these three things is 0. Well, 3 is certainly not 0, so the only thing that could be 0 is one of these two. So if this product is 0, it has to be the case that x plus 2 squared is 0. And if that's not the case, then it has to be that the other factor, x minus 3, is 0. And so we go through and solve this both at the same time, if you will, or one at a time, if you want. Take square roots of both sides, and I'll add the obligatory plus or minus, only in this case it's really not going to matter, simply because the square root of zero is zero, and plus zero is the same thing as minus zero. So this is just x plus two equals zero. So our first x-intercept is x equals minus two. And our second x-intercept is a lot simpler. This is just x equals 3. So see how each factored, each factor ended up giving us an equation to solve and ended up giving us an x-intercept. But there's more to it than just that. It turns out this 2 here has an impact on how this x-intercept looks graphically. So we have the exponent of 2 here. I'm going to want to contrast it with this exponent, but I don't have an exponent. Well, it's just like with multiplying by 1. Anything to the first power is just itself. So x minus 3 can be written as x minus 3 to the first because both those things are equal. So once we're solving, this exponent, the exponent that came from this particular x-intercept, if we follow our way back, this exponent is what we call the multiplicity of the zero. So we say that x equals minus 2 is an x-intercept with multiplicity and then whatever that exponent is, that's our multiplicity, multiplicity 2. So, for example, over here, we said we had an x-intercept of 3. Well, the multiplicity of this x-intercept, and I'm just going to abbreviate multiplicity as mult, the multiplicity of x equals 3 is the exponent. It's just 1. So, the multiplicity, or the exponent, on the x-intercept affects how the x-intercept looks graphically. If the multiplicity is even, then, like here for x equals minus 2, then it's either going to be the case that the graph bounces off x equals minus 2 from above or from below. So, as the book calls it, the book calls this touching but not crossing the x-axis. And even multiplicity means the graph will touch x equals minus 2 but it will not cross the x-axis at x equals minus 2. Whereas with odd multiplicities, it will cross. So at x equals 3, 
it's either going to cross you know, from below on the left to above on the right, or it could go the other way around. We could be above on the left and below on the right. That's how the graph would look if you imagine we're just zoomed in on x equals 3. There's other stuff going on outside of here. You know, the graph is behaving however it does outside. But right now, we're just interested in this little neighborhood of 3 and this little neighborhood of minus 2. So, to write out the, way, the book's terminology, when the multiplicity is even, the graph touches but does not cross. And when the multiplicity is odd, the graph crosses the x-axis at that x-intercept.